A very good afternoon to you. This is Gospel for Grampian. Uh, it's the Community Elements Show and for Brian's good news today. We've come through to Cafe for a Credo and we're here in John Street in Aberdeen. In fact, one of Brian's favourite places. It is indeed because you get such very good service here and, and it's pleasant as well. It's pleasant, lots of banter, lots of cheek, and that makes it all, really. Oh, indeed, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's get started, and uh, for those who are not Scottish listeners, you may well have heard about this export from Scotland, or Willie. <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> the first article. Pupils at a North East school are urging the community to get involved in a fundraising project. Youngsters at Hillside Primary in Port Lithen are taking part in Oor Willie's Big Bucket Trail to raise money for charities including the Archie Foundation, which aims to improve children's healthcare across Grampian. Schools across the area are decorating miniature versions of the full-size sculpture which will be placed around the area. Five hillside pupils have been appointed guardians of the sculpture and they have been tasked with uh, getting as many community groups involved in decorating and naming it as possible. Primary 7 class teacher Fiona Lindsay said, The community at Hillside is very important to us and we want that community spirit to be instilled in the pupils. We have so many different nationalities in the school and 21 different languages, so having that sense of community is really important. We want that diversity to be reflected in the Oorwilly statue. Every child in the school will put some kind of mark on the sculpture because we want it to be a reflection of everybody. It's such an important thing for bringing the school together as well as giving the children a purpose. The kids are going to be going out into the community and getting everyone involved. There's going to be a lot of problem solving involved, lots of artwork too. It's going to be a lot of fun. Each class at the school will submit two potential names, which will then be whittled down to a short list of five. That will then be put to the public vote for the final call on what the statue will be called. Luke Humphreys, who is 11, announced the project at an assembly in front of the whole primary. Luke said they were all very impressed. I hope when it's finished we put it at the entrance so everyone can see it. Fellow pupil Emily Thompson added, I'm really excited to take part because it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see the designs. The North East School has been recognised for its commitment to the environment just 18 months after opening its doors to pupils. Orchard Bray School in Aberdeen has been awarded the Green Flag Award by Eco Schools Scotland, part of Keep Scotland Beautiful. In a letter to the school alerting them to the accolade, the organisation described the flag as an outstanding achievement, saying the application was truly fantastic and a pleasure to read. Students and staff at the school grew and harvested their own food, measured and reduced the level of food waste and opened a school boutique. Plants are also in the pipeline for the pupils to come up with their own school cookbook. Orchard Bray opened in August 2017 and supports children with additional support needs from across Aberdeen. Pupils led the charge for the award with the support of principal teacher Amy Dunnett. It was Amy who submitted the application for the award, which required seven criteria to be satisfied before it could be given out. The conditions included devising an action plan and an environmental statement, pushing cooperation with the community and linking the environmental work of the school into the way pupils learn. Aberdeen City Council's Educational Operational Delivery Convener John Wheeler said, This is a fantastic achievement by the pupils, staff and the entire Orchard Bray community. We said from the outset that Orchard Bray would be more than a school, that it would act as a community hub. This award certainly bears that out and I would like to congratulate everyone.
Anne-Marie Robb, Education and Learning Coordinator at Keep Scotland Beautiful, said Eco Schools is the largest sustainable education programme in the world, engaging approximately 20 million young people in 67 countries. We're proud that Scotland is world-leading in its diversity in delivery of the programme. And our success nationally is due to the individual endeavours of those schools like Orchard Bray who put in so much hard work to achieve their awards. A North East mum who beat cancer as a child is set to pull on her running shoes in honour of her late grandmother. Lauren Gill developed a tumour between her spine and her skull after contract granular fever at the age of 13 and underwent a year of gruelling treatment including chemotherapy. Now age 30, the Cooter mum is aiming to make husband Stuart and nine-year-old daughter Emily proud by taking on the London Marathon. She will be running for cancer support charity Macmillan in memory of her grandmother, Kathleen Dempster, who passed away last year at the age of 76. She said, When I was ill, my mum and dad had to stop work to look after me, and you don't realise how much organisations like Macmillan help in that situation until you're going through it yourself. It was so hard for my mum and dad, but Macmillan helped him so much, and I want other people to be able to get support as well. I'm very grateful for the fact I'm still here. Macmillan are even closer to me now because my nana passed away last year. They helped look after her from the very start. They were there the day before she passed away and it was such a comfort to us as a family. To know my nana was being looked after was so good as well. It's very, very difficult trying to look after someone who just wants to be at home but really shouldn't be. The nurses in the hospital have all the other patients to look after so it can be very difficult for them. The Macmillan nurses came to the house and really made her feel special. They put my nana to bed the night before she died and she was still smiling. When they left her, she was happy and that is so important to us. Lauren, a keen runner, is aiming to raise at least £2,500 through her marathon attempt. However, she also organised a fundraising afternoon tea at Cooter Mills Club last weekend and has almost reached her goal raising £2,100. She is now hoping to do her nana's memory proud when she joins more than 40,000 other runners for the marathon on April 28. Lauren, who works in accounting at Subsea, added, I do a fair bit of running, so I decided to use that to raise as much money as I can. You want to give something back when they've done so much for you, because that sort of thing is more personal. As well as herself and her nana, Lauren is also determined to do her bit for others battling the disease. I'm just determined to do my best and raise as much money as I possibly can. Our other article today is not taken from the Evening Express but is a very important one. Author and lecturer Leo Busgaglia once spoke about a contest he was asked to judge. Its purpose was to find the most caring child. Here is an uplifting story. A woman in New York stood and watched a little barefooted ten-year-old boy, very cold and shivering, staring into this busy shoe store window. The incident took place beside a very busy roadway. She approached the young lad and asked why he was in such deep thought staring into this window. His reply was, I am asking God to please grant me a pair of shoes. She took the youngster, led him by the hand into the shop and asked the assistant to supply them with six pairs of socks for the lad. She then explained her findings to the assistant and politely requested a basin of hot water and a towel. The assistant was eager to help and was very quick to fulfil her wish. To avoid stares from others, the back room was made available to the lady and the bewildered young boy. 
There she washed the ten-year-old's very cold feet and, with a gentle touch, dried them with a towel. By this time, the helpful assistant had returned with six pairs of socks for the boy, matching her early request. After placing one pair upon the lad's feet, she then purchased a pair of shoes and gave them to the boy. Before leaving, she patted the child on the head and said, in a quiet, calming tone, No doubt you will find some comfort now. Her kindness completed, the lady turned and began to walk away. Within seconds, this baffled youngster had caught up with her, and he grabbed hold of her hand, and as she turned, she witnessed the boy's tear-filled eyes flowing uncontrollably down his face. He had only one question for the kind-hearted Samaritan. Good lady, are you God's wife? Now, we have a scripture text today taken from John's Gospel, chapter 4 and verse 14. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into eternal life. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Brian, for that. And I was thinking about that, well, more like that last story that you read out, uh, the Samaritan, and it just shows that you can have good-hearted Samaritans, uh, people who actually care enough and do that. Uh -huh. And then it just reflects what acts of kindness like that can actually do. It certainly lifted the boy. Very, very much so. But I think anyone who reads that, well, mm -hmm. anyone who hears that, will be really chuffed and lifted it, up. It takes just one person to do something special That's right. for another. And we're all capable of doing it. We are all capable, yes. question is, do we? Will we? When the chips are down, will we actually do that? That's an important question, yes. And it's so difficult to pass people sometimes on the street because half the time you're thinking, are they just deliberately doing that to get money so that they can buy drugs? Or are they really in need like that boy was? Are they genuine? Yes. Are they genuine? Uh -huh. And then it's all too easy to shut out the needy people. And the only prayer I can come up with is, Lord, show us those who are truly needy so that we can help them and help us to have the wisdom and the strength to do this and not to be duped by those who are just pretending. That's a very good way of doing it, yes. Right, excellent. And now, uh, there's the other one that to, to mention particularly, and that's uh, the lady who went through cancer but has now come out the other side, uh, the mum and uh, Lauren Gill, who has now decided to not only do an afternoon tea, raising virtually all of her target amount, but is now going to run in the London Marathon, is doing this in aid of Macmillan nurses because of what they have done for her gran. She's doing that in return for what has already been received by her, but uh, she wants to go way beyond that in helping so many other people to benefit as she has. She knows the benefit that Macmillan were for her and her family and she wants other people to have the same benefit. And I think this really lifts Macmillan up a great deal and will encourage many, many people to contribute further. I'm impressed with that story very much so. Uh, yeah. And of course, you wouldn't be putting in any of these stories, Brian, if they hadn't touched you in some way. And hopefully, they would touch our listeners and we would love it. Exactly. Listeners, as they listen to this, where there's a podcast, through podcast.g4g.org.uk, or indeed, a direct broadcast as it goes out live on Friday between 4pm and 5pm on Saturday and Sunday from 12 and during the week as well as uh, the Community Best programmes. 
We'd love you to get in touch with us, and you can do that by sending an email through to info, that's info at g4g.org.uk. Well, what to brought this one about the uh, Uwili Project Trailblazer to your attention, the first one. Here uh, were many people wanting to create a proper community, because I know, I um, mean, here in Aberdeen we have many different nationalities, many different languages, and that. So I can see the problem that is being faced by the school, and because every one of us, you know, we we need to try and get a community spirit around, and it's not always easy, but this will give an attraction to the whole community there and they will be able to join in and feel part of it, feel part of each other. They can take ownership. Yes, joint ownership. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's very, very important. So that struck me very much when I read that one for a start and it became uh, a must record. Mm-hmm because not all the good news is great news. This is. I was very, very impressed with that. Yeah. That's imp- important, having a community uh, situation like that one. And then there's the, uh, the green flag. The North East School has been awarded a green flag for the Orchard Bray School. Excellent. Well, here's a school that uh, it's, it's not just an ordinary school. It's uh, designed to help a lot of people who have maybe extra special needs Mm -hmm. and it sets up to really achieve that. And this award, because of all that they have done, proves that they have achieved and have the attitude to continue to achieve Mm -hmm. their aims uh, of helping other people. Again, there's this community element, uh, which is very, very important. That's very much involved here, and there's a photo in the paper, obviously, in that, and uh, you can see the joy on the faces of these pupils, where uh, that they have received this yes. recognition, you know, and they will continue to live for the community. But, I mean, that's, it has to be said about a, a school that gets going even from scratch and then fosters in the children such a great sense of community. Correct. And they, they are encouraged gently to, to work towards this. Yeah. And as they're shown love and made to feel valued, they do work towards it. Of course. I think that's a... It's another brilliant story, actually, mm-hmm. you know. That's another one I could not have missed, you know. Definitely. Well, Brian, can I thank you very much for all your good news stories, including the last one, which we started discussing uh, now. Could I get you to read out the scripture, please? Yes, indeed. From John chapter 4, verse 14, which says, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Excellent, Brian. Thank you very much. And we'll see you you back again. Uh, We'll be probably back at the studio uh, at the same time next week. We'll look forward to that. Excellent.